Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick tip on how you can connect to a remote Kubernetes cluster using SSH tunnel. So one of my viewers asked me how he can use kubectl command from his local machine to connect to a remote cluster, Kubernetes cluster running on a remote server. So all he has is access to the remote SSH server, that's it. He logs into the remote server via SSH and then runs kubectl command in the remote server. But he wants to know a way, if there is any way to run kubectl command on his local workstation, but connect to the cluster running on a remote server. So I'm going to show you there's a way that we can use our SSH tunnel, existing SSH tunnel to direct all the traffic to the Kubernetes cluster using or through that SSH tunnel. Assume that you've got a server where you've got your Kubernetes cluster running. For this demo, I've got a Kubernetes cluster in a Google compute virtual machine. So I've used VirtualBox. I've used basically I've used my vagrant environment to create this Kubernetes cluster with one master node and two worker nodes and I've got uh, assigned a private network and all these virtual machines will have the private IP address from this virtual network. So these IP addresses are accessible only within this server, within this host. So it's not accessible outside of this server. But these virtual machines can talk to the outside world through the bridge. It can go through the ETH0, the actual physical interface, and talk to the internet. But my local machine here, my laptop here, won't be able to connect directly to these IP addresses because my machine doesn't know, is not aware of these IP addresses. So that's why we are going to use an SSH tunnel. So all you need to have is an SSH access to your remote server. So the the endpoint of the API server in my case is https colon IP address of my master node and it's listening on port 6443. And I've got my Kubernetes configuration file I can SSH to this server and I, I can run kubectl commands. Okay, let, let me first show you my setup on the on the server. Okay, so let me log into my remote server ssh minus i i'm using ssh key to log into my remote server okay i've logged in and i can do kubectl get nodes okay one master two worker nodes version 1.19.3 kubernetes cluster running fine kubectl cluster info my cluster is running fine and i've got my kubeconfig file and you can see the server that I'm connecting to is the address of my API server's endpoint. So as of now, I can only SSH to my remote server, which I've done, and I can do kubectl commands, and I can do vbox manage list VMs. So these are all virtual box virtual machines, and these machines can only be accessed if I'm logged into this server. Outside of the server, I don't have any access, okay? So I'm exiting out of the remote server, I'm back in my host machine, in my workstation, which is Arch Linux. And if I do kubectl get nodes, it doesn't know how to connect to the remote Kubernetes cluster. In fact, I don't have the kubeconfig file. And if I do ping 172.16.16.100, it doesn't know, it doesn't know how to reach that IP address. So we've covered this and now we're gonna set up an SSH tunnel and then connect our kubectl so that when it runs a kubectl command, it connects to the API server running in my server, okay. So all we need to run is this SSH command to create a tunnel. So basically what we are doing here is, uh, let me explain you the option, minus F is to fork to the background. So when you run this SSH command, it forks to the background and uppercase N is, it tells SSH not to execute any command after it connects to the remote server. And L is for local port forwarding, 6443 is where I'm specifying that um, I need to listen on port 6443 on my local machine. It connects to the remote machines um, whose IP address is 172.16.16.100 and on that machine we need to connect to the port 6443. So bear in mind my machine doesn't need access to this machine. It only needs access to the, the server, okay? So in this case, this server. So once I get to the other end of the tunnel, only, it's only this machine, this server, that needs to have access to the K-Master, to this IP address, okay? So I'm in my workstation. I'm going to run this command. SSH, I'm creating the SSH tunnel now, minus F, N, L, 6443, local port, 172.16.1600 is the remote host that we want to connect to. 
and on the port 6443 via GCP server. Okay, okay, cool. So our connection should be established now and I can do sudo netstat minus NLTP and if I grip for 6443, there we go, 127.0.0.1. So our local machine, my local machine is listening on port 6443. Okay, and now I need to download my kubeconfig file from the remote server to my local machine. Let's do that. So let me make the directory dot cube directory and I'm going to download the using SCP minus I and I'm passing the SSH private key GCP server and connecting to my remote server and I'm copying the config file to my dot cube directory. Okay, so that's done and if I edit that file you can see the server it's connecting to is 172.16.16.100 which I've already told you that my machine don't have access to this one so I need to change that to 127.0.0.1 because our machine is listening on port 6443 and now we should be able to run kubectl commands but it will still but it still won't work let me tell you why kubectl get nodes unable to connect to the server because the certificate that's associated with that endpoint doesn't have a valid IP address. So the IP address that we are using is not a valid IP address. How can we resolve this? I'm going to edit this file again and instead of 127.0.0.1 I'm going to specify kmaster.example.com. Do my machine know what kmaster.example.com is? No. So I'm going to edit my etc host file and I'm going to add an entry for 127.0.0.1 kmaster.example.com so when I go to kmaster.example.com it will go to 127.0.0.1 okay and now I should be able to access because I know the certificate has an alternate name for kmaster.example.com so the certificate that the API server uses, which I'll show you in a minute, um, is also valid for kmaster.example.com for the, the fully qualified domain name of the machine. So now if I do kubectl cluster info, there we go, I can access the cluster info kubectl get nodes there we go so i'm on my local machine cat etc os release arch linux so i'm definitely on my local machine and i'm running kubectl commands and i'm interacting with remote cluster here through this ssh tunnel and the other thing i wanted to show you is let me log into uh, this server let me ssh to the master node i wanted to show you the subject alternate name ssh root at 172.16.16.100 cube admin uh, okay so cd to etc kubernetes pki and this is where we have all our cluster certificates and the certificate we are going to look is api server.crt and if i remember the command correctly open ssl x509 minus no out minus text minus in api server.crt okay i'm basically viewing the certificate and you can see here this particular certificate that our api server uses is also valid for all these alternate names so i can use kmaster.example.com i can use just kubernetes i can use kubernetes.default i can use kubernetes.default.svc and all those things let me change that to just kubernetes and i'll show you it will still work okay okay back in my host machine i'm editing my etc host file and setting 127.0.0.1 to just kubernetes and I'm also editing the kubeconfig file. I'm changing kmaster.example.com to Kubernetes. And now I should still be able to run get nodes. Okay, because that certificate is valid for all these names. And okay, let me also show you one thing. I'm going to edit config and set this back to 127.0.0.1. Sudo vi etc host. And let me remove this. Okay, so kubectl get nodes. We were having this uh, problem, right? Because this IP address that we are trying to use in our config file is not valid for the certificate for the uh, the API server endpoint. But if you don't want to change any of these, you can ignore the certificate errors. kubectl minus minus insecure skip TLS verify, and then just do 
get notes there we go so you don't have to change any of those things and basically you can just do an alias or something alias kubectl equals kubectl minus minus insecure skip tls verify yeah and you can do kubectl get notes kubectl cluster info and so on okay so we've configured our kubectl to go through the SSH tunnel to the remote server and access the Kubernetes cluster running there. Okay. And even I can also use my Kubernetes UI because I've, I've done a video on uh, the container lens, a uh, beautiful Kubernetes UI. Even those things, I've installed lens on my local machine and I still can access the cluster that's running on my remote server. Okay. So home venkaten.cube config is my cube config which has the API server address and which goes through our existing SSH tunnel okay so add cluster invalid <laughs> okay for this we definitely need to have a valid uh, DNS name let's change this to Kubernetes and also edit our etc host file 127.0.0.1 Kubernetes and reconnect Okay, there we go. That's our Kubernetes cluster running on the remote server, but the actual application, the UI, is running on my local machine. Okay, thanks for your time watching this video. If you've got other wonderful suggestions on how to access a remote Kubernetes cluster through Bastion Host or any other mechanism like um, Sox proxy or anything, let me know in the comments and it will be helpful for others as well. Okay, I'll see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.